today I have the pleasure of speaking with Marit Smith from AlphaMed. How are you today? Hi, Tracy. I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Well, I'll tell you, your news that you just put out this week is extraordinary. Your record Q3 EBITDA uh, 53.7 million and your net debt free position. Let's start there. Tracy, very pleasing results. For us, what is important is to deliver and to deliver consistently. Our first mine, which is the Mpama North mine, is certainly performing. And that performance on the back of a rising tin price um, speaks wonders in terms of profitability and cash flow generation. Uh, there's cash flow generation, and then there is, in my humble opinion, miracles. Can you talk to us a little bit more about this, uh, how you became net debt free? Because uh, uh, you, you basically just talk to us about this. I think anyone out there at Investor Intel should read your news release and read uh, how you have done this. It's quite extraordinary. So Tracy, our, our production levels increased in quarter three, 2021. Um, to just below where we want to be on a sustainable basis. You know, we'd like to see around 12,000 tons of contained in a year, which is 3,000 tons a quarter. And we came in just below that. Now, that uplift in production, together with a 20% higher tin price, resulted in a $53 million EBITDA um, level. Now, the conversion of our EBITDA to cash flow is, is very relevant and, and quite interesting. Um, you would have noted that our net debt position reduced from $30 million down to a net cash position of $1 million. So, you know, just over $30 million of cash flow generation against a $53 million EBITDA level is, is very pleasing. And um, for us, at the end of the day, it's all about cash. You know, profits need to be converted to cash. And, and we successfully did that in quarter three. And of course, tin being a critical material, there being a rising demand for tin, that's all extraordinary. However, I want to stay on your earnings for just a minute. According to your uh, results and some of the coverage that I've uh, reviewed, uh, you're looking at doing a dividend in 2022 for investors. Is that correct? Basically, our board will meet to discuss our dividend policy to the, towards the end of this year. We would like to see a distribution to shareholders. You know, our shareholders have invested in this new Elfman mine. Um, certainly our investors look forward to the blue sky potential and us allocating capital towards our growth initiatives. But we would also like to see a bit of a balance in also distributing cash to our shareholders. So that will be a topic for discussion towards the end of this year. And we would like to do that as soon as possible, subject to board approval. And of course, in addition, to your outstanding uh, earnings. Can you talk to us about TIN in general and what is happening in the market? I'm sure there's people at Investor Intel going, hey, maybe you know it's just a spike in the price, but there's actually a, a global shortage. There is a shortage of, of TIN at the moment, Tracy. You know, from a demand perspective, TIN is all about solder, which is the glue that holds our technology and circuit boards together. Um, and that goes to the, the growth in the electronics industry and it goes to growth in, in green energy and the like. So demand for tin is on the up. Okay, there's, a, there's quite a significant tailwind with regards to that. And then when one looks at supply, as you well know, mines don't get built and commissioned in two, three, four, five or seven years. It takes more than a decade for a feasible deposit to be financed up, to be built and to ultimately produce. So supply is constrained, limited investment in exploration in turn over the last few decades, which is contributing to the issue. So for the medium term, we certainly are seeing a deficit in the tin market um, and robust demand going forward. Um, and what really excites us is that Alfman is very well positioned to capitalize on its growth potential and ultimately fill a substantial portion of the supply gap going forward. Well, there's lots of things to be excited about. In addition to your uh, outstanding Q3 results, you also announced a drilling update here just the week before last. Can you talk to us about your drilling plan action here? So Tracy, when, when Elfman embarked upon the development of the Basia Mpama North Mine, certainly back then we acknowledged that the potential of Elfman 
exceeds what Mpama North is all about. It was important for us to prove up the starter mine, which is Mpama North, which is now very significant in terms of global tin production. I mean, we are currently producing 4% of the world's mine tin, so that's very significant. But ultimately, our license area covers a highly prospective ridge over 13 kilometers. And the results of having now drilled a substantial portion of the next door deposit confirms our thesis that this ridge is highly mineralized. Um, if we consider the outcomes of our various geological work over the past two years, and we compare the, the, the signature of our current mine and Obama South to other targets further down south, certainly these, these signatures are being repeated. So we are very positive that there's potentially another Mpama North and another Mpama South and, and possibly two or three or four more down, the, down south on the Basia Ridge. Um, all it takes is more drilling and certainly we are generating cash flow to fund exactly that. Well, your result, results are stupendous. Thank you so much for joining us today, Moritz. And what I would really love, if you'll just, I'm going to put you on the spot here, if I could get you, Jack Lifton, and Christopher Ecclestone to discuss tin as the real critical material. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Thank you.